Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday. It's August 2nd, 2013, and this is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. I hope you had a good week of trading here, or if you're an investor, that things were uh, that you're on the right side of things. It's easy to be on the right side of things when we have a uh, runaway bull market here. Um, don't don't try to uh, think it's up too much or should come in. Listen to price action only. The market for the week, the S&P was up 1%. S&P, uh, I'm sorry, the NASDAQ up 2%. Russell continued to add. Semiconductors came back some more. Uh, gold was down once again. And, you know, we're seeing the trends, uh, is, the established trends continue. The S&P 500 uh, was kind of stuck in a little bit of a range until uh, Thursday when we had that gap higher and we added to those gains today so you can see that we were kind of just kind of stuck underneath this 169 169 and a quarter that was our level of resistance we got above it with the Federal Reserve and then kind of pulled back down uh, but again gapped higher on Thursday so for the week we had the average price for the S&P 500 here on this five-day chart we're looking at a volume weighted average price right about 169 and a half the volume weighted average price of course being the average price that, that it shares exchange hands at and for the week it was 169.50 adding further to these all-time highs in the S&P 500 and we can see that on the monthly chart you know anyone's guess is to where this market will uh, top out but you know we've seen so far this year a pull a, a strong pullback that had the potential maybe of creating a, a corrective environment but it continued to move higher instead and we are back above that rising five-day moving average we held the levels that we thought were important for the week we had previously noted that the trend line was broken but uh, support was holding and as long as this little band of support in here uh, 167.75 to 168 as long as that held it was still the burden of proof was on the sellers and we got a resumption of the primary trend which of course is higher here so no one's making money on the short side if you're holding on uh, especially if you're uh, Bill Ackman I suppose and um, you know you take a look again at that volatility index uh, we spoke about that last week and once again the volatility index finished at a uh, low down here for the week down at $14.24. So basically, anyone who's ever bought this thing and held for more than probably about uh, one minute or so uh, and still holding uh, is in a losing position. Stay away from the volatility index. It's uh, pr pretty much useless in my opinion. Uh, I know that's controversial, but the VXX, the construction of it is flawed and it's a terrible tra product to trade. I hope that uh, they one day pull it from the exchanges. The Nasdaq was up, as we said, about two percent. I'm sorry, one percent. No, it was two percent uh, for the for the week. And we saw a, a healthy, you know, after the Intel earnings, we saw that uh, Intel was just one company. It gapped down, and we did uh, observe that we had um, uh, closed. Uh, I'm sorry that we had broken this trend line here and again I was uh, warning that uh, you know that the prior support I'm sorry the prior resistance was acting as support in this 74 ish level and if we broke below that perhaps we would see further selling but the burden of proof was on the sellers and what we saw was last Friday the market closed above this little uh, resistance what had been resistance for a few days and since then we've seen a nice steady pattern of higher highs and higher lows above a rising five-day moving average, which has, again, uh, and, and here we're looking at a 10-minute time frame, uh, this five-day moving average is converted through uh, through the math. You can look at that on, the, on my website under the um, uh, popular post about using a five-day moving average. Anyways, we can see that, you know, the trend is higher, we're extended, uh, it seems like it's up too much, and all of those sort of things that you hear people saying, and hey, it's only up because of the Fed. The reason doesn't matter, really. I don't know why people are so anti the market is up on the Fed, because as long as you're trading with the trend, you should be happy about that. You're, you're able to line your account with, with more profits, and eventually, yes, that trend will change but we don't have it in terms of price action. We've seen pullbacks, but we haven't seen any real established downtrends uh, this entire year. The Russell 2000 continued uh, to new highs as well. This market held the support level that uh, we were looking at earlier in the week that, uh, you know, here's another market that broke its uh, trend line 
pulled back a little bit and into you know held that 103 103 and a quarter level and once it got back above that five day moving average it tested it held its support and here we are again at all time highs in the Russell 2000 so what we want to see for next week is in the spy we would like to see probably about this 169 to 169 and a half hold its support as long as we do that the buyers remain in control of the intermediate term time frame and it's innocent until proven guilty in the Russ and I'm sorry in the Nasdaq I think it's a little bit uh, less clear but probably we want to see 75 and a half to 75 75 that's probably our level that we want to see hold and we always want to be aware of where that five-day moving average as well and the Russell 2000 uh, ideally we would hold above uh, about 104 and a half uh, but the bigger levels really down near about 103 semiconductors were down a little bit today but for the week again they did recover and um, the semiconductors were up 1.8% We'd seen again that it was Intel that uh, had people spooked uh, back here a couple weeks ago, and you know we got back above. Uh, we were talking about the intermediate term being guilty till proven innocent uh, until it got back above and held above that five-day moving average. So we're now holding that 50-day moving average, and really I still view the semiconductors uh, as in a longer-term uptrend, but over the next uh, week or two maybe more neutral with a with, but with a positive bias that if you have to choose a direction, I would think it was more likely to continue to move higher. The, NAS, uh, the financials uh, continue to move uh, into new high ground as well. They are up at this prior level of uh, importance. Perhaps they're heading towards the top end, up near about $23. We do have an advance that uh, pulled back on lighter volume in here relative to the adva uh, to, the, to uh, the advancing action. And, you know, again, it's not really the volume that matters so much. It's, you'd like to see it confirm, but we've been fighting this uh, low volume argument for quite a while. And as I always say, only price pays. So back to the financials, I think if we hold above 2060 to 2065, that's the key level for this market. And there's a lot of good looking stocks. It still looks set up to continue to move higher. Uh, looking at gold, it is kind of riding this declining 50 day moving average. It's still in a downtrend. It's still guilty till proven innocent. I think that if they don't scare you out, they'll likely wear you out and your, better, your money is best served elsewhere. Let's take a look at Apple because this one behaved really well. We spoke last week about uh, this stock getting back above the volume weighted average price since the event. So again, using Realtick, which is the trading platform that, that people ask me about every week, what trading platform do I use? It's Realtick.com. That we we had seen right here last Friday, the volume weighted average price we got back above. So I came into the uh, week bullish on Apple with the potential. I was thinking of heading up towards about this trend line here. Uh, let's just draw that in this trend line because that kind of came together as well uh, at about 450 with the volume weighted average price year to date. So we were talking about this 448-ish level, I think. Well, we got above that level and it certainly wasn't a reason to sell short, especially as we remained here in this 30 minute time frame above the rising five day moving average. So we, all week we had higher highs and higher lows above the rising five day moving average. I would think that uh, next week, you know, if you can pull, if you see a pullback down towards 457, I think it's likely to be bought. That it seems as though Apple might be making a run for its 200 day moving average. It hasn't been above that 200 day moving average, which here the green 40 week moving average is the approximate. Um, uh, equivalent uh, since November of last year and if we were to continue to move up towards that uh, 200 day moving average I'm sorry for switching around time frames uh, that would get us to about 476 and I think that's very uh, likely uh, on this rally that it could even continue up towards this uh, this this level up here where we'd seen uh, the gap closure back in uh, February so Apple near term I, I do continue to be bullish on Longer term from an investment standpoint, I think that it's likely that we will at some point come back down, you know, we rally up towards here and then come back down towards 450, 430 even. Um, so it's still working out on that longer term time frame, but it is looking better. Interest rates uh, moved higher again this week. If you look at the TLT, uh, it was up 1.1%, which of course brings the yields down. No surprise there. The TLT is in a downtrend. It's guilty till proven innocent. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We, you know, it, it 
off the trends, by the way, um, you know, you look at what was your reaction to the jobs report, or what do you think of the jobs report? The jobs report, in my opinion, is a uh, it's a distraction. It's something that get everyone kind of sits on the sideline for, and then we get a gap in either direction, and then we have to listen to the message of the market. The market chose to uh, view it as a reason to buy today. Uh, whether or not that's the reason people were buying is really irrelevant. The fact is only price pays, the market was up, and if you're positioned correctly, which is to the long side, that's the path of least resistance, that that's where your money ought to be and you ought to be uh, participating. There's still a lot of stocks that are setting up each and every day, low risk, high probability trades, and that's what we specialize in every single day at Alpha Trend. So uh, sign up for a seven day free trial and find out for yourself if it's, if it's right for you. Have a good weekend.